Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the Indies Trusted Servant Show on InspireSmall.biz. Um, Danny O'Malley, Indies Trusted Servant. Every Monday at 3 o'clock, a new episode goes up. I want to welcome Ryan Henry back after a little bit of a health scare. We've been off the air for several weeks, so it's great to be back. Uh, what is Indy's Trusted Servant? Well, that's me, Danny O'Malley. I do customer service training and keynote speaking about customer service and organizational culture. I learned all of that from the hand of the master, my late father, Joe O'Malley, from the time I was about nine years old uh, at a small grocery store in Broad Ripple that ultimately failed, and then later at O'Malley Food Markets, where I spent most of my career. What's the Indy's Trusted Servant show on InspireSmall.biz? Well, I like to describe it as lively like local small biz and community talk where you can feel the pulse of Indy. And today's guest, somebody I just met, her name is Vicki Yamasaki, and she is with an organization called Corpus Christi. Uh, it's a Catholic Christian organization, and they got a big event coming up she's going to talk about a little bit later. But first, Vicki, let's get to know you. Tell the viewers, and I had I finally, I finally got over saying listeners from the radio show and switched mm -hmm. to viewers. It took mm -hmm. me a while, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but tell the viewers about Vicki and her background and how she came to Corpus Christi. Sure, sure. Well, I, I, I grew up actually in Michigan, uh, cradle Catholic, and um, and that'll that'll that's important because it'll lead to why I did this ministry, uh, and. Um, Grew up there, and uh, my husband wooed me away uh, to Texas uh, back in the 80s. Uh, we married, had a couple of children, and I became a CPA. Uh, finished my schooling down there and um, went into public accounting and, um, and had uh, much success in my professional career. And uh, eventually we moved back closer to family in Indiana. Okay. And, uh, and when, I, when did you come to Indiana? So that was 1995. 95, okay. Yeah, and it was to get closer near family because we were only about four, five miles, uh, five hours away from Michigan. And uh, I, I was working at the time for one of the big four public accounting firms. So you could go anywhere. I could go anywhere. Yeah. I you, could and, go but anywhere. you chose Indianapolis. Yeah. Well, I was recruited here okay. uh, by one of the big four accounting firms because they wanted to make me a partner uh, with that accounting firm. And so I had a lot of success in that career. And I eventually, um, because I was traveling so much, wanted to settle down you know, with my family and in, even in that national partner role that I had. And so I chose and called Jerry Simler at One America. Okay. And, uh, and asked, you know, did he have a place for me in the leadership team? Okay. And, and so you went to One so America? went to One America. I'll be darned. And I'll be so darned. worked there. I had a, a fruitful career and uh, retired there. And I said to myself, I, I said I was going to retire at 55 so that I could give back to the community. Okay. I felt very strongly And this about was that. how long ago? Without, so that was, without asking directly what oh your age is. Oh my goodness. Now everyone's <laughs> going to know can do the, math. the age. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So that was 2016. Okay. Five, five so, six years ago. And okay. I, I've done some things like launched a mentoring program for uh, single uh, pregnant moms yeah, in you know that were homeless, and uh, helped dress for success and pass the torch for women. Okay, but I, I just had this yearning, especially with all the unrest and the attacks on the church, and the the cultural um, unrest that we're seeing in our nation. And then the, there was a catalyst that happened with a guy named Father Ted Rothrock back in oh, 2020. St. Elizabeth Seton, and, yes. And, and I'm somewhat of an activator. That's one of my strengths. And so in 2020, uh, I staged a prayer rally because they were really going after this priest. Yes. Because he was just speaking truth and warning the flock uh, to be careful, you know, be careful. Um, and and there were organizers against him, and so I organized 
for him. Okay. Because one of the... He was a very well-liked priest. Oh, my gosh. He had funded so many efforts to actually help Lucy, uh, uh, Lucius Newsom with the Lord's Pantry here in Indianapolis. He funded an entire Haiti ministry. And so, um, and I think if people understood all of what he had done, they probably would not have gone on the attack like they did. So it was very unfortunate. And so I spearheaded a, a fairly large prayer rally of about 120 people throughout that day. And people began to approach me uh, and they said, Vicki, this is bigger than this Father Ted Rothrock issue. Because what we're seeing in our country is an attack on the pro-life movements. We're seeing this right now. Right. And, and just on pro-marriage and religious liberty. Well, even on the family, if you will. That's what I'm saying, yeah. pro-family. Yeah. So that's what, that's what we call a cup, Corpus Christi for unity and peace. It's CUP for short because it's a long name, but CUP for short is all about promoting unity and peace through prayer and through education. Because we believe if people understand the truth and understand through education, they'll ignite their critical thinking. And Critical thinking is an interesting topic. Yeah. We, I was talking to my, I was with a bunch of my Xavier buddies yesterday down in Cincinnati, and we were talking about how when we went to school, we were taught to critically think. Mm -hmm. But that's not happening so much anymore, as much. Well, and, and you know, the Socratic kind of learning that you get in some classical school settings isn't really happening, you know? Right. And, and so I'll never tell somebody what to think. But what we do is we provide education, we'll pro what we provide speaking events, and we provide blogs and special comment papers and, and YouTube interviews. Um, all of this is to promote, uh, you know, really some thinking about what are, the, what are the sides of the issue. And, and, and this is important right now because people are being canceled around the country uh, yes. from having these, you know, pro-life, pro-marriage, pro-family, pro religious, you know, just protecting our religious liberty rights. They're, they're being silenced. So, so t now let's get a little bit more into the technical part of, of, sure. of your organization. Where is it headquartered? Yeah, so Carmel. It's headquartered in Carmel. Yes. Okay. Yeah. When did it start? So it started two years ago. Just two years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two years okay. ago. And, you know, I've got a fantastic board of directors that supports me. Uh, we have a fairly, fairly substantial membership. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, get into, but it's large. And, and it grew, you know, first in Indiana, and now it's reached nationally. So how many people are employed at Corpus Christi? So we believe every dollar needs to go to the events, so we don't pay a dime toward any paid uh, person. I mean, we just, every dollar goes to the events. That's Every incredible. dime that anybody contributes goes to the promotion of education. We also have prayer rallies. I mean, I, I'm very dear friends with Monsignor Shadle. He loves CUP and what it's doing. He hosted a uh, many holy hours, many prayer hours. The most recent one was for Ukraine, and we had that at St. Luke. And are you you're a member of St. Luke? I am. Okay. I'm a member at St. Luke, and and uh, we had several hundred people there. Uh, so it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I just had. Um, a beautiful group of women, more than 300, for an event on May 5th where we flew in a speaker that was a very beautiful, inspiring, positive, uplifting speaker that was pro-life. So, yeah. Tell us about how anybody might access information, your sure. website, yeah. anything else you want to tell us about uh, how to communicate with you folks and maybe if you want to join the effort or learn more. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So, it, the hardest thing they're going to have to do is get to the website. So it's Corpus Christi for Unity and Peace.org. 
dot org. Dot okay. org, not dot com. Dot org. Corpus Christi for Unity and Peace. Dot org. That's right. That's yeah. a mouthful. <laughs> it is. We couldn't get cop, unfortunately, but yeah. So uh, once you get to that website, it's very well laid out. You'll see there's an event page, and we have these events that are coming up. Our the one that's coming up. On, yeah, we're gonna we'll, we'll talk oh, about sure, that. Sure. We'll talk about that. Yeah, but it's what you'll find are blogs, resources, special comment papers, our videos uh, from prior events, as well as interviews. Okay, great. And, so you have. Let's get to the event. Sure. And then we, if we have time left over, we can come back and talk some more about the mission, I guess. But oh yeah. I'd you love have to. a big event coming up pretty soon, mm. right? And uh, let's see. We're up on uh, the website on. Today is uh, May 30th. This event is June 8th. Okay, yes. so yes. tell us about the event and if somebody wants to attend, how they might go about that. Yeah, it's, it'll be very easy if, first of all, the event is how Catholics will restore our country. They're, they're gonna take back and save our country. And who we have coming is Brian Birch, who is the president of Catholic Vote. Catholic Vote is the largest national Catholic advocacy group in America. And for those of you who listened to my radio show in the past, I had the guy that runs Catholic Vote, John Sherman, runs it in Indianapolis on the radio show probably, oh, I don't know, eight or nine months ago. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. He so, was at one of our events in February. So yeah. what, what Catholic Vote, and this guy, Brian Birch, runs Catholic Vote. They're headquartered where, do you know? Well, they, they're moving their headquarters to Carmel. They are? They okay. are. I don't, I, didn't, I don't think when I was talking to John back then that that yes. had been determined yet. Yes. So that's they, new news. They now have more employees residing in Carmel than they do anywhere else. Okay. Well, where was the headquarters? Do you know? Wisconsin. In Wisconsin. That's mm -hmm. right. That's mm -hmm. right. What, and I, I spoke to the, the, the crew there in January of 21. Mm -hmm. I did my keynote speech and um, I think there were eight or ten people there. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many people are there now? Yeah. So they're hiring so rapidly. I don't want to. Oh, I, yeah, they're I mean, growing. Yeah. They're growing. They, they, just in the last two months, they had five, six positions that were that they were trying to fill. So specifically, what what they might hear from this guy that runs Catholic Vote, obviously it's pro-life, okay? For sure. But what else? Well, this is where it's it's so ironic because when I went to the website for Catholic Vote, they completely align with everything the Cup is doing. They are pro-life pro-family, religious liberty. And it's all undergirded by the protection of our democratic republic. And that is important yep. because we, if we do not preserve our democratic republic, then how are we to defend all of the sanctity of life, the sanctity of marriage and religious liberty? And family. And, and family. family. And of course, family you, is important. When you jump to the family thing and you, and you, and you look to all the violence, a lot of that is because families are not what they oh, used to be, right? Just so well said. Yeah. So well said. Yeah. yeah. So, so this uh, Brian Birch will be the keynote speaker, but you're also going to hear from a couple of other people that you want to talk about. I, I'm really excited. Monsignor Shadel, the pastor of St. Luke Catholic Church, will be offering the invocation, and that will be followed by our own Attorney General. It, it, Indiana's Attorney General Todd Rokita will offer introductory comments and then we'll be introducing Brian Birch. So this is phenomenal. Some big, some big names. And he's, some he's, big names. I don't know that people are aware of this. He's Catholic. Rokita. Rokita's yes, Catholic. Yes. And he's fought for some hard things, not just for Catholics, but all Christians. And 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 for and taking and for some families. swings and arrows for it too. That's right for yeah. families, for parents, for children, and and so I think it's it's a nice pair up. Um, so the event is June eighth. Tell us what time, where, and how you Beautiful. can attend the event if you are interested. Right. Yeah, so it'll be at the Bridgewater Club okay. on one hundred and sixty first Street in Carmel. So just a beautiful venue. A beautiful venue. Beautiful venue. It'll be an evening event. Doors open at 6.30. 
the um, it'll be a dessert reception with coffee and some you know lemonade and things like that. So it's not a full dinner. Nope, not a full dinner. Okay. Nope, nope. So it's seven o'clock. We'll offer that, and it's seven thirty sharp. The program, the program will begin. And it starts at what time? 6.30? 6.30, doors open. 6:30 7 doors p.m. Open. is the dessert reception. So how do you get tickets or do you just walk in? No, we don't want people walking in because we have to give the count to Bridgewater Club Right, you do. Advance. Yes, yes. So just get to our website, Corpus Christi for unityandpeace.org and get to that event. Events. Page. Okay. And, and you'll sign see up. it. You'll that, see what's it. the cost? So we've we've got a special for couples. Because we're encouraging couples to attend, twenty-five dollars, and for individuals, fifteen dollars. Okay, not not overly expensive. No, not at no. all. No, we we try to make it reasonable because we've got donors who've come forward to make these programs affordable for everyone. And I will say, if there are students out there, young adults that want to attend this program, Danny, we will let them come free. All they but they have, still have to sign up. All they have to do is email us at cup at Corpus Christi for unity and peace dot org, and I will take care of that. And how do you spell cup? C U P. C U P. Okay. At okay. Corpus Christi for unity and peace dot org, and we will make sure that they get in for free. And also, if anybody else has any questions, that's, that's right. the thing to do. Email cup at Corpus Christi for unity and peace. Dot org, right? That's right. Uh, the June 8th. Now, uh, this sounds like it's for $25. You're not having a big dinner. Are you hoping to make this a fundraiser? Well, or are I, you going to break even? We're going to break even. You're going to break. Do yeah. you have some fundraising things going on? Normally, what we do because we try to bring these speaking events to people so that we can get the message out. So, through our membership, we send out through email to our members for donations. And so that is how we fund many of these programs. In fact, all of the programs that I can think of, we've had some very courageous priests that have spoken truth and gotten canceled that we've flown in and and offered to put up here in hotels and and paid for their transportation and speak some spe- small speaking fees. We've covered all that. And so we never really even quite break even on these events. So we always look to our donors. To the donors. To okay. help cover the How cost. big is the donor base? So, you know, it's small. It, like anything else, you know. You're, you're just two years pe- old. That's right? right. People are getting our newsletters, our blogs, all these interviews free right now. And what we ask are for donations to help fund this educational effort because the message needs to get out there. Absolutely. Um, well, this is just fascinating, and I'm just I'm really just picking up on it right now. Uh, do you go to Catholic Business Exchange? Yes. Yes. I'm surprised we haven't met there before. I couldn't go this morning because I was driving back from Cincinnati, but that's a great place. That's where I met Monica Kelsey. Oh, she's she spoke. Fantastic. And yeah. and uh, yeah. The just so the for the uninitiated, if you missed Monica Kelsey before. Um, they have the safe haven baby boxes in fire departments, and there's one in Carmel, and I know there's one in Zionsville, and I think there's one in Fishers mm-hmm. in fire departments, and the Carmel one just had their third baby dropped off. And Amazing. correct me if I'm wrong, but when a woman decides she can't take care of the baby, but she doesn't want to abort it, she has the baby, she goes to the fire department, she puts it in the safe haven baby box. Nobody needs to see her do it, but within minutes, a fireman takes the baby, calls a number, and it goes to a family. That's right. right. And they're uh, forever family. That's that's it's just a fantastic organization, mm-hmm. and I'm so proud that we had her on the show. And you, you know, it it beats the alternative by a country mile. It sure does. Uh, by far. Yeah. So tell us. Uh, you're, you said you had children that are 42 and 30. Yeah. What are they doing? Oh, and do you have grandchildren? Yeah, you know, I. it's so interesting because here I, I'm a, bu- a businesswoman, right? They, but they heard me talk about serving the community for so long that both of them went into serving people. And so our oldest daughter, she serves in a ministry that helps the homeless and she's got a dual certification, and so she helps 
um, them come off of addiction and and helps them and, with and their mental illness downtown. Where, here in Indianapolis? Yes, okay. it's called Blue Triangle. Okay. And so she actually is, spearheads that program. And, and awesome. she does it for Anthem, interestingly, but it's all because she wants to. She's help employed them. at Anthem She's and does this through Anthem, Anthem, but she does. Well, God bless Anthem. God, I know. Right? I know. Yeah, yeah. And then our youngest daughter, she uh, helps children with uh, autism. Oh. Uh, she's probably aware of Damar, oh, right? Oh, she's very aware. Yeah. 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 Damar's been one of my clients. I've had them on the radio show in the past. And oh, what a wonderful. fascinating, wonderful place yep. that is. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any grandkids? We have three kids. Three Grand, grandkids? Three grand grandkids. Oh, awesome. my gosh, they're awesome. adorable. Yeah. They, they are. They are adorable. Uh, I'm taking uh, my... Uh, 10 year old grandson to the Indians game tonight. Oh, Can't nice. wait. Can't oh, wait. That's great. So let's get back before we before sure. we have to go and remind people about this event coming up on June 6th. Um, oh, June 8th. Actually. I'm sorry, June 8th. June 6th is my brother's birthday, so my fault. Uh, so it's uh, tell us the keynote speaker and tell us the other, uh, you know, sure. famous people, locally right. famous people that are going to be there and uh, how people can attend the event and support you guys. Absolutely. So June 8th, Bridgewater Club, Brian Birch, the president of Catholic Vote, the largest Catholic advocacy group in America, will be the keynote speaker. And we're going to have the invocation offered by Monsignor Shadel. And that'll Pastor be at St. Luke. Pastor at St. Luke, followed by Todd Burkita, Indiana's Attorney General. I mean, it, it's going to be a fantastic lineup. And how do you access your ability to attend this event? Yes, very easy. Go to our website, Corpus Christi for Unity and Peace.org, and go to our event page. And you'll be able to click on the registration button right there. $25 for couples, $15 for singles. Mm -hmm. And if teenagers want to come, they're free. Or even young adults in college. Okay, but what do they have to do to come? All they have to do is email us at cup, C U P, at Corpus Christi for Unity and Peace.org. Corpus Christi for Unity and Peace.org. Do you, we got a couple of minutes. What else do you want to tell people? Well, I would say it's a call to action for folks because we're living in a time where we all need to pray, educate, and inform. So it starts with prayer. Everything has to be rooted in prayer. And then the second part of it is to educate ourselves, you know, and to understand what's going on around us, to be informed. And the third is to, the act part of this is to educate others. And, and, you know, we've talked in the church about evangelization. Well, this, can, this is the infancy of, of evangelization. It's having a, that dialogue with another person. And you can ask questions without telling somebody and get them to ignite their critical thinking. And so I, I really encourage people to sign up for our newsletter that we do weekly. It's free. And you can do that on Through the website. website. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Just click the get, get involved tab. Okay. Vicki Yamasaki with uh, Corpus Christi for Unity and Peace. Thanks for being our guest today. Thank you, Danny. Uh, next week, our guest will be uh, James Medawar. He's with a, a business called Schooley Mitchell or Mitchell Schooley, I forget. And they're cost reduction specialists. Mm. Uh, I wish we'd have known about cost reduction specialists back in the day at O'Malley's, but I don't even know if they existed. Mm. So tune in uh, for that show next week, and uh, thanks for watching. Welcome back once again, Ryan Henry, the, uh, the major domo of InspireSmall.biz. See you all next week.
Thanks for watching this episode of the Indies Trusted Servant Show. If you liked this episode, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more updates. The Indies Trusted Servant Show is produced by InspireSmall.biz in Indianapolis, Indiana. For more episodes of the Indies Trusted Servant Show, visit www.inspiresmall.biz slash Indies Trusted Servant. Thanks for watching.